can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See lights like a beach if you find the same right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. Today is no different. I have Ed O'Keefe, um, and you can check him out at edokeefelive.com. And Ed, before I formally introduce you, I always like to point out other episodes people should check out of the podcast. And these are people you know well, actually, Ed. Um, Todd Brown. Todd Brown, check his out, out, the founder yeah. of E5 Method, considered one of the top authorities. The two people I was following early on, Ed, way back when, was was you and Todd Brown. Todd Brown was marketing to chiropractors and you were oh, doing yeah. marketing to dentists yeah. back yeah, in the day. I didn't know Todd was in the market. Yeah, oh, that's great. Yeah, way back when. Maybe he doesn't even, he doesn't even remember. It's been so long. But check his interview uh, out. Uh, Caleb O'Dowd uh, is one of the top direct response marketers. Um, and he's worked shoulder yeah. to shoulder with the late Gary Halbert. Just yeah. one of the geniuses I've seen in direct response. I know you know Caleb well. Um, Joel Irway, founder of the webinar agency. Um, he's that's a great episode. And um, Roland Frazier, who Ed's done yeah. work with, and um, Ron Popeil, um, who unfortunately passed away, but is considered the infomercial king. And this is going to relate to exactly yeah. what Ed's going to talk talking. about yeah. because not everyone can be Ron Popeil, they need a Ron Popeil. <laughs> actually right and we're going to talk about ed's wingman offer okay um before we do this episode is brought to you by rise 25 and at rise 25 you know we help businesses give to and connect to their dream 100 relationships and how do we do that we actually run your podcast we're an easy button for a company to launch and run a podcast we do the full strategy accountability and the full execution you know ed we call ourselves the magic elves that work in the background to make it look easy for the host and the yeah. company and for me, the number one thing in my life is relationships. And I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships. And I found no better way over the past decade to profile the people and companies I most admire and share with the world what they're working on. So if you yeah. thought about podcasting, you should. If you have questions, go to rise25.com. And there's not many people I've had on three times on my podcast. Ed is one of the only few people, wow. you know, wow. I, I highly respect Ed on so many levels. And I'll Ed O'Keefe is a father of seven. He grew up in a household of 13 children. Whenever sure. I think I'm gonna I want to give up or things too hard, I think of Ed. I'm like, I have no excuse, zero excuse in my life. Uh he wrote the book Time Collapsing, the new art of speed, money, power, and meaning. Um, he's used time collapsing methods to leap to the top of several industries. He started multiple companies from scratch to multiple seven and eight figures. In dentistry, he sold over $50 million in marketing systems and seminars. He started a supplement company, sold over $60 million in health supplements. And like I said, on top of all that, he has seven kids running businesses. He did Kokoro Camp, which is a 51-hour mini hell week created by uh, Mark Devine. And I was like, oh, I got psyched up and I was looking at what it was. And then I saw some of the most in shape toughest people say it's the hardest thing they've done. I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe I'm not cut out for it, but Ed, thanks for joining me. I uh, did. You're making me blush over here. Great to, great to be here. And uh, I, I think I'm going to actually add <clears throat> some more customers to rise 25 uh, today because we're going to be talk talking about why they should be being interviewed uh, in a very structured way, but also, um, yeah, very great group of people you mentioned prior. I mean, um, what an amazing group of people. I think the, the one topic we're going to talk about a lot today is the idea of like the offer wingman and the, um, I think all those guys are some just geniuses at structuring offers. And, you know, I, I think to start out, if, if the, the big thing on any business, whether it's multiple eight figures, multiple seven is it, it all comes back down to how do you get that first sale, right? And how do you structure an offer in such a, a, a an unbelievable way? My my best offer was definitely to my wife when uh, I think it was over chocolate martinis, which started out the uh, the uh, the beginning of the seven kids. So um, people we don't all believe me, Ed. You know, people don't believe me. So I'm like, yeah, oh. seven, really? Come on, he's yeah, he's That's seven right kids, through. and like here it is, yeah. right here. It's true. 
True, true. Yeah, that's true. There's my Julia right in the middle. She's she's pretty amazing. They're, they all are. They're all really amazing, differently, beautifully perfect, you know, so. Here's a time collapsing book. You can check it out. But um, talk about the offer wingman and how you stumbled on it. Yeah, I mean, to dive right in, I mean, I think the one thing is, is that I've always been really good at, first of all, I've always been really curious about people. So I like, I like, I enjoy like selling Jeremy Weiss way more than I enjoy selling Ed O'Keefe, you know, like just naturally, right? I mean, it just feels better. It's easier for me to see what's going on with somebody's offer. And um, the quick story behind it was, you know, uh, a few years ago, um, I get a phone call, a guy wants to spend a day with me, a super successful dental consultant, like runs a mastermind, big coaching club, uh, selling $65,000 packages. And I was really, really busy at the time running the supplement brand and the, the health category of our business. So I, I, I took on the, I wasn't really doing coaching or consulting as like a model, but long story short was he comes to the house, spends a day with me, great guy, love him to death. 73 years old. But one of the things that happens a lot of times in, in coaching clubs or in masterminds or in any business or memberships is that the owner or the expert, they're in the they're in the fishbowl, right? Like they're 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 so used to the water that they don't even see like what's going on around them. And it's like the old phrase of, you know, it's hard to read the label when you're inside the jar. It's hard to see the forest through the trees. Like I can give analogy after analogy. And so um, with my you know, 27 years of experience of just launching offers, and, and as we all know, like an, an offer that goes to multiple seven figures usually starts by losing literally, they like to say nine out of 10 times. So you're usually losing, it could be a year. It could be like, I remember when Marine D3 took off, I was 14, 16 months into it. And I can I can point out like the different people who gave me different pieces of wisdom that that allowed me to create some breakthroughs. And um, <clears throat> same thing as when I was in dentistry. Actually, there was a trick I learned in dentistry, which I could talk about in a moment. But it's very easy for me to see. Like when I looked when I was talking to Doctor Bill, I, I just looked at all his marketing and I was like, dude, I love you. Like I see what's unique about you, but your marketing team <laughs> is totally missing what I see about you. And, um, and I didn't, I didn't crap on his marketing team. I just, that was what was going through my head. I was like, they'll never get what I'm trying to, uh, the advice I'm giving you. So I was like, why don't I just interview you? Right. And then, so as you know, being an interview guy is like, I interviewed him, but I interviewed him in a structured way that brought out the story, brought out every objection that a prospect would have. And I was prepared to clobber every objection if he couldn't. Right. Like, oh, this is expensive. Right. And sixty five thousand dollars. I was like, yeah. But if I was a prop like so that I, this is my setup on that. And we're going to talk about how to actually do webinars and a few other because offer wingman has like four components to it. So I just want everyone to know before I um, before we go into like telling about how I did an interview. It's not just an interview. Like it, it's a it, it's the, the concept is, is that if if they are not asking to be in your coaching club or mastermind or membership before you sell it then your, your context and your setup is not doing the job, if that makes sense. It's like when they tell Ron Popeil, and Ron Popeil was famous for doing the infomercials with the knives on TV, right? So people wanted the knives because of the demonstration of the genius, which the, the genius was the knives, not the wingman. Okay, it's very important to understand that. Like the wingman is almost supposed to be non, um, not important, but but super important, right? Like John Paxson passing to Michael Jordan to beat the Cleveland, um, you know, the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers. Sorry for all you Cleveland people. I know the rest of the world has forgotten about you as well. It's okay. It's okay. Um, but I'm a Chicago guy. So we'll send it. We got to send us to Vinny Fisher as well. We got to get him on this tag. I was going to say, uh, Vinny won't be too know, happy about that. But there's only so many objections that people have when they look at your offer, right? There's only so many objections. And there's, but it's your job as the offer owner or as the entrepreneur, the, the, the chief revenue officer of your business to not only clobber the objections, but clobber them in multiple different ways and at multiple different times. OK, um, so for, for Dr. Bill, for example, $65,000 sounds like a lot of money, except 
if he's helping you get one full arch case a month because he taught your team five questions that they can start implementing tomorrow, now you're doing an extra twenty-five, thirty-five, forty-five thousand dollars a month minimum with one or two patients, and your investment's only sixty-five k. Divide that by twelve. What are we looking at there, right? We're really only looking at an extra seven thousand a month if I'm doing no, not just a toy. It's not even it's not even that expensive. It's like you know fifty-eight hundred a month or whatever that number was. That is like the price of one implant. See where I'm going with that? And so the same way people would break that stuff down into like, oh, it's just a cup of coffee a day. Well, if you're selling really premium price stuff, you know, you got to, you know, how is a Lamborghini expensive? Well, not when it's right next to a uh, Boeing 7, you know, 47, right? Right? You know, it's not, it's just not, right? And so, so my job always was, is if the most people, first of all, aren't phenomenal at doing that. And even the best ones, like Roland Fraser is really, really good at selling. Um, does it put his selling abilities on steroids when he's got somebody who's serving up the objections, letting him clobber it, and then adding on to, you know, another way of looking at that, you know, so like, that's really powerful. And so, so it depends on like, I've worked with experts that are really great on like the great offers. They're really good. They're, and they're the most fun to work with because we're just now finding more money and finding and helping more people and impacting more people. Um, and then with people that are really struggling, I can come alongside them and be like, just do your expert stuff and then I'll, I'll structure it all for you. And then when it comes time to do the opening and the close, which are some of the most important things, as long as they don't over-educate, which I know you were going to ask me about, like, what are some of the biggest mistakes people make? Um, but then I could just do the pitch for them. And again, now. I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to tell everyone this, right? There's only there's only so many objections, right? You got you got fear, uncertainty, and doubts. That's what they have. But it's 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 going to be time, identity. Identity is 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 so important to make sure we have them visualizing in the future. And you can't say visualize in the future. Um, we got to take them out in the future, right? Time, uh, like that's why I said like there's five questions we can add in your office tomorrow that your team can start using within, within 24 hours because they're asking, how fast can I get the result? When I started working with those guys, and, and frankly, I, I don't monitor their sales costs. So they, they might still be doing this, but they'd be like, well, it's going to take us three months and four months and six months. And I'm like, can we just take the most profitable thing that you have in your business and give it to them today? Like literally the moment they sign up, we're going to do a fast start call. It's installed in their business and boom, they get a quick result. Because now the rest of the program is absolutely free. The money goes away, right? And so, I mean, I, I can talk about this stuff all day, Jerry. I get really excited about it. You know, um, in, in dentistry, for example, I work with a lot of professionals. I worked in dentistry for 13 years. And one of the things that I would ask is like, would you actually build a business, a practice that was designed to bring you price-driven patients? Like really, like dental implant, you want to bring, you're trying to design a business that brings you only cost-driven and price-driven patients. Now, for all those coaches and experts and clients out there, service people like there that are finding they're dealing with money uh, objections too much, I can ask you the same question, right? Um, and uh, the one thing I'd say is um, that, the one thing I'd say is that, uh, can you hear me, Jeremy? Okay, somehow some click around. The only thing I say is like, well, then you went out, you spent half a million dollars on a building, you went and got this really expensive implant machine, you went and hired all these team members. So it's probably costing you a couple of million out of the gate. Yet the amount of attention and, and, and focus you put on pre educating patients using this type of content is zero. Yet you're complaining about dealing with cost driven people. And so one of the first things I like look, doing is looking at people is like, how are we obliterating all these objections before they ever get to the call to action? And then, and then there's other things there. Then how are we, you know, I can go through this whole thing with you, but I, I'll stop right there. But I want to get, I want to get the, the pre, uh, Jay Brand would call it the preeminence, predominance thing, whatever. Well, the, the reason that happens is because you create authority and perceived credibility through education that identifies 
all the wrong ways they're doing it that's costing them what they are hoping for. So you are now a solution to all their inadequacy and all their emotional issues. And the reason why they don't feel confident to brag or like when they see their kids or their wife, that's how we have to look at some of this stuff. And so that's kind of like that's some of the stuff I do, you know, and make and make price disappear completely. So when you mention the objections, Ed, um, would you include price money in it? So we have fear, doubt, time, identity, and money. Or well, yeah, are you saying doubt, money shouldn't be an doubt, objection if you position it properly? No, you have to talk. Well, you have to talk about money. I mean, like yeah. it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna cost them something, right? So there's usually a there's like a handful of things, right? There's time. Like, do I have the time to do it? And how long is it gonna be till I get the result? Right. There's a uh, reputation and identity, right? Which is what what am I what am I escaping that's that I'm I'm running from? And usually people in almost everything are they failed at it before they they uh they've been a failure before, whether it's weight loss. Um the number one objection with why am I not doing this weight loss or fitness thing is because I failed at the 35 other ones that I've done. So why is this different? We have to address that. Like, you know, Amazon, if I'm trying to become an Amazon seller, right? Well, you've probably tried other business opportunity things to make an extra 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 before, and it hasn't worked. And while, you know, like it's the whole let them off the hook thing, it's not your fault. It's the same thing in dental marketing. It's the same thing in, in podcasting. Like, well, you've tried podcasts before, but you've never really gained traction. Well, how have you tried to do it before? Well, I, I hired the VA by myself. I, I, I sucked at all these different components. And then I got really, really busy. Well, which part did you hate the most? Well, I hated uploading it and then editing it. It's like, okay, well, or you could just hire Jeremy's team. And they, what if we took that off your plate? Would you still want to do podcasts? The answer is, well, yeah, of course I would. So you got to go through like the, the, you failed in the past. You don't want to be a failure again. And what is it going to look like? Um, when when this is all over working together and we we have many ways of doing that right you get them quick wins in your pre-education so they feel like wow i got a small win right number two is you get case studies that they can identify with so when we when i look at everybody's testimonials either a they're not using specific enough testimonials that is directly obliterating the top objections in sequence okay and then does not also cover, and I learned this when I used to do NLP and hypnosis. The thing is, is that if I said, hey, there was a, a former chiropractor who ran a podcast company who had an issue with, and, he, and, he, and this never worked for him. Well, now you know I'm talking about you. Well, you, you want people to relate to your testimonials and your case studies, but um, you needed to use a range of different people, you know, whether it's the new person all the way to the uh, ideal client. And... Uh, yeah, those are those are really important things to obliterate and move off the table. I want to hear about the you mentioned four components and how the offer wingman works, but but you were doing this even in your your dentistry days um with Wendy, yeah. right? So well we were yeah, so like when so here's what was funny. So I didn't really plan on having a business around coming alongside experts or business owners and helping them craft their offer and then being their pitch man or being their, uh, uh, like their post pitch. Cause we have a, we have a thing I'll talk about in a minute called unannounced bonus method that helps take fence tippers and, and get them to buy. But all of this kind of started making sense to me when I was like, Ed, this is what you're naturally been born to do. Like I'm one of 12, 13 kids and the 12th of 13 kids. I love talking. I like, I like coaching people. I've coached volleyball for 26 years. My team just finished third in the country. My son just won the Catholic league conference for golf. Um, I mean, my there's winning. I like being involved in the winning part um, and coaching people up and then helping people win. And I'll tell you just a quick, I'll talk about winning in a second, but everybody listening, like, the, the number one job when we're when we're trying to impact your prospect is not to educate them. The number one job is to give them a shift in perception so they make it in their mind. Uh, it becomes so obvious that they should be working with you. And you don't do that by over educating. And most experts that come to me, Jeremy, are over educating. And I can tell you, Wendy was doing this when I first met her. So. 
when I look back at my life, I was like, wow, every business I launched, I did it the same, same ways. We would create an offer. Um, I would take, I would take, uh, you know, the audience, which is a really profitable audience. I want us to get back to choosing the market and how to up level your market. Cause if you have a better offer, guess what you get to do? You get to charge more and you get to go after better clients. So we'll get to that in a minute. But with Wendy, Wendy was a hygienist in um, doing consulting in dentistry. And I was the marketing guy. I was the new patient guy. And she had come to one of my conferences. I said, well, cool. So great to meet you. You know, she was great. I'm like, um, told me what she did. She helped one of my clients. She had a story. She had solutions. And I had a case study. See what I had there? I have three elements, right? There's a story about her journey, a case study that she helped because now we can amplify that and build an offer around it. And her problem was she didn't know how to do one-to-many selling. Like she, she was a one-to-one consultant. And I had an audience. So I said, like, why don't you come on up? Let's sell them something. You know, that's what we do. We're in the business of making money together. And we just created a new coaching club, you know? And so um, I interviewed her. We did a teleseminar and a webinar and then just started promoting her to my audience. And really quickly, man, that was the most profitable business. I had two most profitable backend businesses that anybody here can replicate. It's like, if you have your core business, you're generating leads, you're generating customers, you're generating clients. Um, you know, what else can you add on to the back end that solves another problem for your client that doesn't rely on you that if you added it would be 80% net profit. And then I, since I'm selfish, I'll say like, well, then let's go find an expert. Let me, let me help interview them and let me help create the pitch. And then we'll offer it to your audience. Like, it's, it's like, wow. Guess what? That's how all the nine figure businesses do it. Like you look at Agora, they get one offer working and what do they do? They build another publishing enterprise behind it. They do another one and another one, high ticket offers, run them up. And, and it's unbelievable. Like that's the model, right? So with Wendy, that was great. We did it with another, uh, another guy in our market. Um, I'll keep his name out of it. I called him Mr. X and he was a big internet marketer. And dentists wanted another way to add uh, extra income. And I didn't realize this. This is interesting, Jeremy. I didn't realize how much professionals that are in an office all day want extra income. Like really, really want to retire. And I mean, that, that, you know, I did the same sequence we do with everybody. You know, I interviewed them. We ran a uh, content beforehand. Uh, we crafted an offer, right? And, and um, we built up all this demand and then we launched it. We had it open for four days. It did $1.7 million in a really small amount, a uh, small audience of people. Um, our price points were, I believe, uh, $25,000, $35,000, and $100,000. And, um, you know, again, what, what's the formula there? You have to have something that people want to buy and then you got to stick it in front of them. And, you know, the, the offer has to be sexy and attractive enough so that when people look at it, they really feel like a moron by not saying yes, or it's so good, they, they do whatever it takes to get into it. And we've all done that, right? With the, with the wingman, again, you, you've been doing this for all those years. And, and back then, you didn't really identify this is a wingman offer right? You've learned that. And, and once you realize that consciously, you can really hone in on it and make it even better. So what have you realized? What is the wingman offer that you were doing with Wendy and Mr. X and all? Well, throughout? I, I think it's really just helping. I think it's really helping a business owner, uh, like with these experts specifically, it's really taking the pressure off their shoulders to, um, to not have to feel like they're selling and just stay present and then follow a structure. And so that structure obviously is, we're not here to educate them so much that they have all these notes that they walk away from here and don't do anything, right? It's, it's really why like Russell Brunson's whole like three steps and Jason Flavin's one of the best webinar guys I've, I've studied. Um, Myron Golden's another genius. And what started happening, the wingman concept came because I, when I was in dentistry, 
every time I ran a live event, I hired a wingman. You know, like in, in, in looking back on it, this is just so clear. It's like um, Tim Paulson was Joe Polish's wingman in his plumbing business. And Tim Paulson would sell. And so for everyone understands, it's like, what's a wingman? A wingman is designed there to help sell more of your high ticket services or more of your product in a way that edifies the expert. It creates a third party endorsement of the effort or the expert. It allows the expert to just be the expert and the offer to be the offer. And then it allows me or the wingman to be the person who sells harder on the audience, who has permission to be tougher on the audience, who has permission to, you know, pull every single uh, arrow out of the quiver. But here's what's really funny about that. The audience, and so it could be over Zoom or it could be in a whatever, appreciates it more because they want to buy. They just want to, they want they got to have the emotional and most times they feel emotional and they're just not clicking it over logical. And then that's why you got to destroy all the objections. And then it takes a little bit of expertise to do that properly. And then even like that, watching this now, like Jeremy, I told you, like one of the things that the biggest misconception is like, well, I, I don't really need a wingman. Our sales are really good. Like I, I old friend of mine who was in my mastermind years ago was like, well, sales are good. I just need help with marketing. I'm like, well, uh, what do you think? Um, what do you think I'm talking about here? You know, because if you could bump up your average cost uh, or average lifetime value or average value immediately and get increases of conversion rate by an extra, let's just, let's pretend I barely help you at all. 5%, 10%. If you're selling a, a $5,000 package, that's an increase of $500 per the same amount of cost. Okay, now what if we do it by 50,000 and you get a 10% bump? That's 5,000 extra every time somebody comes through. Now, if you're running that through your system a lot, well, that starts to add up very, very quickly. Okay, um, you could spend a lot more money. If you were making more five, like for every thousand you were, you were spending, if instead of making 3,000, you were making 6,000, would you, would you just pocket all that money or would you go get more customers and accelerate your, you know, your bottom line profit? So there's a lot you can do by adding new components. Now, I spent 50,000 bucks, brought Tim Paulson in. Tim, Tim did a setup pitch for me. He did a panel for me. Um, it was much better when I was running my events to have somebody like Tim Paulson, uh, who was a third party person, talk about how great Ed O'Keefe was than it was for me. And trust me, I've done it without wingmen and you just sound more pitchy. Um, I hired James Malinchop twice, who James is amazing, um, to do the same thing. One year I hired Bill Rancic to do the same thing. So um, I've always been cognizant of like, your job is to help me, um, is that I needed help, even though I was good, quote unquote, at, delivering my offer and making an offer to the audience what other so that's an objection right it's like i already have good sales right it's it's all fine right what's another objection that you tend to get well then well the good sales thing is the other thing that's starting i i see a lot of especially the mastermind and coaching club guys that are reaching out right now is like there's just seeing a plateau right now and it's like decline and so um, what I would say is that there's life cycles in masterminds, there's life cycles in coaching clubs, there's life cycles in businesses. And so if you don't have new front end offers happening all the time or new angles, like let's just say it's 99% the same thing, but we are able to um, uh, have a different voice. Like even the voice could be as simple as we change it to be like, hey, everybody, uh, it's Ed O'Keefe. And today I'm here with Jeremy Wise. Now, Jeremy has packed more rooms you know, do it with his pot, you know, like just that one little hook can, can open up a floodgate of new people. Cause if you've been in a market long enough, you're going to see a, you're going to see a law of diminishing return on your same ads going over and over and over again. Um, that's number one. Number two is, uh, um, wait, what was your question again, Jeremy? Cause I don't want to go down too big of a tangent. No, keep, no, keep going. It was, it was just objections. Any objections that you're getting? Obviously one is, um, you know, or like people don't think it's further, like, like this isn't relevant to me, or or you're just going to sell me something. It's like, well, no, your webinar is working, but do, are you running a unannounced bonus two days after the webinar? Which is an unannounced bonus. Just method is 
a uh, little bit. I took a little bit of this from Travis Seidel because he does a, doesn't he doesn't use video with it. But like the whole idea is you, you need to have a cleanup campaign. And what's a cleanup campaign? Well, they've gone through your webinar, right? You, you've now given them a 24, 48 hour uh, expiration timeline. Now, what if you sent out an email that was like, hey, I have great news. My friend Ed O'Keefe, author of Time Collapsing, has agreed to do um, or, you know, a, a, a free webinar, a free training on the five outside the box ways to grow your X. It could be anything that you're doing. It could be personal development, it could be business. As long as I can modify my time collapsing, whether it's business development, cash flow, profit, mindset, modeling, any of those things, I can talk about anything fit into the box. But what we do is we take, um, I got a, a handful of bonuses of like events I've created. I would talk to the expert and be like, what are the biggest objections that they're having? This is the number one trick, tip I can give everybody. Else. What is the number one objection that you're dealing with? And can we create a bonus that is 10 times the value of what you're asking them to invest in your thing? So if it's $25,000 a, a year, what is a quarter million dollar bonus that we can give them, perceived value? And then let me do the pitch. And so what we do it is we disguise it. And so I have my whole pitch down on this and it's like, hey, you know, I heard Jeremy, I'll pretend like you're my guy, Jeremy. Jeremy um, made an offer to you guys yesterday. And out of the hundred of you that's on this training about how to grow your personal brand with your podcast, um, I heard that there's 41 of you who did not say yes. So for those who are in, congratulations. I have free gifts for you which I'm going to tell you about right now. And for the 41 of you that haven't jumped in yet, I'm going to have, here's my, here's a little bribe. I'm going to invest in you because I know when you invest in yourself by investing in Jeremy, I know it's a lot of investment going on, but I want you to invest in yourself because here's, here's three reasons. Number one, I know that people who pay and invest in themselves, pay attention and are emotionally committed to getting an outcome. So if you came to this training today, because you want to grow your business and your personal brand, but you're intellectually committed, but you're not emotionally committed because all you do is go on free trainings for the rest of your life. You go to YouTube and YouTube and YouTube. Jeremy's seen you on all his trainings and you're just one of those freebie people and you're wondering why you're not getting the outcome is because you haven't committed to finding a model, a mentor and, and duplicate and replicate the results that they're willing to give you. And Jeremy's giving you an offer that's worth, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars, and he's asking fifteen hundred bucks for it. I mean, this is crazy, right? So let me talk to you for a moment, and then I go through like a, a the bonuses. I'm going to give you this, and I'll give you this, and then we we um, I you know I stack the deck. And here's the coolest thing, Jared. Like everyone got to understand. Like when I say to people, I'm hard on people. I'm not hard on people. I expect a lot out of people because people need. When is the best you've ever done in your entire life? The best you've ever done in your life. There's usually three things that happen. One, you made an emotional commitment to do, get the result. Whether it was because you were, you were fed up and you were broke, whether your back was against the wall, whether it was you were trying to prove someone wrong in high school and college, like I'm going to show those idiots who I really am and I'm going to go be successful. I'm going to study, you know, like 24 seven, or maybe you grew up broke and you're like, I'm not going to be like, I'm going to change my generational lineage. Right. Um, whatever that might have been for you or, uh, but you, you made an emotional commitment at that thing. Right. And the second thing you did is you found a model period. End of discussion, a model and a mentor. There's always a model and there's always a coach. And the fourth element that I hammer home. So, um, which is more important today than ever before is the idea that you need to have a crew of people that, um, that you are getting better with, you know, iron sharpens iron. Uh, it comes from Game of Thrones, you know, when she says to the sister, do you remember what father used to tell us that in the winter, the lone wolf dies, but the pack, the pack uh, survives and the pack thrives. And right now you're trying to be a lone wolf. And I'm just telling you from personal experience, because I've had some successes. I've had a lot of failures in my failures. I've always tried to do things on my own and I've always tried to hide from it where you need to come out in the open, get a mentor, get a model. Blah, blah, blah. And so I'd like to invest in you. I'd like to actually, you know, encourage you that if you're this far, if you're intellectually here committed today, you're, you're emotionally committed to you're, you're, looking, you're looking for permission. And then I can have a couple of emotional stories in there too, that, that builds that trust rapport that gets that call to action. And then I'll put another 24 hour uh, bonus or a uh, time limit on it. Like, Hey, you know, I got, here's, you got four bonuses, but these, these two expire at midnight tonight. 
So that's after the webinar, Jer. Now, before the webinar, that's where you throw in the either a mastermind talk, which is more about the, you know, Napoleon Hill. Um, it could be a little, a little more light, like a little more like, oh, everybody, this is how we're going to do it. Like this is what people who are successful have in common, a little bit lighter, right? And and then um, I would also put the interview out there as well. And before they get it, um, there was a really, really smart guy who runs a call center. I'm forgetting his name. Um, is it Randall Grizz, Grizzly? Grizzly? Grizzle? I don't know that one. He's talking about they were in a phone center and they sell high ticket for people. And they were saying how what happens be from the time of sale to the phone call is critical in the success of the phone call being successful to upgrade people. And so what I always like tell people and cut me off, I'm talking too much. I don't mean to talk too much, but you got me going here is, is I'm now that I've bought, I'm looking for validation that my decision was good. Right. And that again, I got to get my identity pumped up. Like this is going to be successful. Here's why you're going to be successful. Here's why it was a great decision. And, um, and, and, and that's where like an interview can come into play either before or after a webinar and, or both, you know, could be using cold media as well. Oh, and, and you, you have had Brian Tracy on your stage before talking about this very thing about when you look at success and you've said this before, it's, you look at the people that they're surrounded with really. Well, yeah. So he, Tracy and that Brian Tracy, and I, in fact, I, I've, I've hired him three different times. Two of them were one-on-one -on -one consulting and then one for my team. Um, Cause I just fell in love with him that much, but he likes to state a, a Harvard study that talks about how um, that the number one indicator of success and this goes to your audience right now. Like if you don't have a mentor, if you're not working with somebody on your offers, your growth, your business, you're trying to do it your own. I bet you're doing a great job. I mean, I really do. I bet you're doing a great job, especially if you listen to this podcast. If you're, five, if you're following Rise 25, baby, you can't, you can't not be doing amazing. But no, really, um, but it's like it's your peer group. Like the direct correlation is who you spend the most amount of time with. Peer group. If you, you know, like because you're no matter what anyone says, Jeremy, like. Like you're rattling off like how much we sold in supplements or how how much we did. When I tried selling my dental business, I made every mistake in the book. Like I, I've made every embarrassing mistake, right? Like every single one of them. So I'm at a nice point of life where when I come work with a client, I don't want them hiding anything from me because I'm like, look, I've already made all the mistakes, bro. Like in personal, financial, like you, let's just get it out. Let me help you. Let me come inside you. And so, um, and Brian Tracy was a great mentor of mine. Dan Kennedy was one of my first mentors as well. He was phenomenal on stage. Um, I hired uh, Joel Bauer. Joel Bauer came to the house, then helped map out one of my PowerPoint slides back when I was in dentistry. So I'm the product of investing in myself too. And I know you're looking at the time, so I want to make sure I'm respectful of it. So, No, I was looking for, Joel has the can, right? Joel Bauer. <laughs> he's the uh, magician. Uh, he's a, oh, the magician. A oh, Probably one of the best salespeople of all time, you know. You don't, um, even, you don't even know what the hell you're, you don't even know what the hell you're buying half the time, Joe Bob. I mean, he'll look right at you and be like, you're the most sexy and attractive man alive. Get to the back of the room and put your credit card down. And people like stand up and they run in the back of the room. And they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so entranced by this guy. He's really very, he's very, very good. Michael Burnoff's another great guy. There's a lot of great people out there. I mean, um, yeah, there's so many good people. I, I'm learning every. I mentioned before you did some some work with Roland Frazier. Yeah, Roland. Um, so Roland and I have been friends for a really long time. Our first actual thing we did, actually, it's so funny we mentioned. Um, uh, I, I offered, we did a $25,000 package weekend <laughs> for dentists back in the day when Roland was working with a uh, local SEO like franchise thing. And um, how did it work out? I interviewed him. I interviewed, put him in front of my audience. Then I pinged him after the interview. I pinged him with a uh, a offer. Hey, Roland and I are doing a weekend. Da, da, da. So that was one of the first times we started making money together. Um, and then about two years ago, I did another component of Offer Wingman, but I didn't realize, just sort of understand, I didn't really realize how to like connect all these dots and that it was this important because I was like, hey, after your challenge, what are you doing with all the buyers? that don't upgrade 
See, everybody does like, oh, they sell their $7,500 or $9,000 or $15,000 $25,000 coaching. And then they just like stop. They just put them in like the, the um, what would you call it? The, uh, you know, the mass mailing, the, the broadcast email. And I was like, well, give me those 1,200 bodies, you know, like or those names that bought like the $55 thing. And let me see if I can upgrade them. Well, so I sent him a direct mail piece, one page letter. Learned that from Travis. Brought them into my email inbox. What did I do? I created a little video, brought the offer together, matched it up. And then we sold off of a list of 1,200 people. Um, it cost me about 1,300 bucks to get in the mail. And then we did over $70,000 in less than four weeks. Okay. Then Roland said to me, he's like, well, hey, why don't we, he's like, yeah, I got this thing over here called Consulting for Equity. Um, and I, and I came to his event, was helping out, try to help one of his part, not his partner, but like a client of his out by speaking on a stage and helping orchestrate his event for him, um, and help him sell his mastermind. So Jeremy, when I look back on it, all these like pieces were coming together of me doing this because I'm good at that. Like, I'm just good at it. I'm like, I, I know how to run an event, know how to run a room, know how to run, run, um, emotional states in the room, keep people's attention and set the sale up. And then we launched um, Consulting for Equity. And what did we do? We created a, a webinar, a sales letter, um, an offer, and we did an interview. And then we took some of these pieces together, launched it to the list. And I believe in the first four weeks, that did over half a million dollars. And he, he Deanna, and the crew were there. Uh, I mean, they've taken that thing to you know, multiple, multiple seven figures. I think it was over seven figures in the first 90 days. Pretty incredible stuff. So, so, wow. um, yeah. And who, um, who's ideal to reach out to you? Ideally, it'd be somebody who's running. So, I mean, there's two different categories, right? You're, you're running leads to your mastermind, your webinar, or you're, uh, trying to fill your coaching club, fill up your, uh, membership. And you have a, a high ticket of 5,000 or above. If you have something under that, after we do an offer makeover, we're going to be selling something over 5,000 because people that go in for 2,500 bucks, there's always another offer layer that you could be selling for 6,000. Maybe the timelines get longer, but there's a, there's a percentage of your market space that will always pay more than you're currently uh, charging. Like even with Dr. Bill, he, you know, 65,000, he was charging 58,000 before I started working with him. After they hired me, I went on a, on a uh, commission structure based on the funnel I built for them. So he just raised his prices to pay for me, right? And so that's one of the added values that I bring. But the um, like we have a we have a guy in the legal space that sells four thousand a month mastermind program. And so um, again, he's been in the market for over ten years. Frustrated because it just seems like he's been around. So you know, sales plateaued a little bit, uh, needs a fresh insight, new voice. And for me, I, it was, again, super easy for me to look at it and be like, uh, I could see exactly why things are plateauing. And it was very easy for me. Um, in dentistry, we have somebody in the implant space, but I, I'm trying to structure this so I could take up to two people in each market and, uh, make sure they're not competing against each other. And, uh, um, so 5,000, 15,000, 25,000, 35,000, any of those kind of things. The, if you want to win quick, you're ideally generating leads or you have traffic and re referrals coming to you so that I could bolt on an unannounced bonus method, like literally within 24 hours and we can make money together. Um, if you need a full offer makeover, you may or may not be a good fit. So they could always just hire me to do a, you know, an offer makeover, which is an hour consultation. I review the offer, review the assets. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, I think brand new people that are just starting out, they might be able to hire me for an offer makeover consultation or some advice, but um, that's not the ideal client for offer wingman. Offer wingman is definitely for people that have been in the market for a while they want to supercharge their sales, um, plateaued, backsliding sales, or sales are going well, and um, they want to supercharge it. 
The last category there might be if you if you have a budget and you have money and you're willing to you this is what you're committed to, um, you know then then we could build out a webinar together and I could I can grow that for you I can help you grow that. But you just got to make sure you realize that when you're starting new offers, um, it's the hardest spot in the business. And so what I always like to look at is like how many case studies do we have? We only need one good one, but it's got to be one. If you're just trying to make up stuff, you're like looking for for like, uh, you know, and I don't really know my offer is, then then it really just requires a lot more effort, time and, and money. And and so um, there's you could reach out, but I would say probably a consultation is the best way to go on that. one. And first of all, thank you. How should people reach out? Where should they find you? I know that people can check out. Like I mentioned at O'Keefe Is there another way that people yeah. can can reach out um yeah i mean so the 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 best way so you go at okeyflive.com there should be a uh, opportunity there to either watch a, a free training on how to optimize your offer um or apply for offer wingman uh or apply for um our offer makeover uh where i'll review it all for you um the other option is and you can email uh me at eddie e-d-d-i-e at ed live.com that's eddie at ed live.com put in the subject line offer wingman or just send a text message 312-607-6799 and then just type in offer wingman um and then uh, we'll ask you some questions make sure you get directed in the right way and um yeah, I mean, you know, the the uh you know me, Jeremy. So like I just want to share with everybody right now, like here's the deal. You will walk away with some insight if we end up not working together. You will walk away with some insight that will help you uh either tweak your positioning in the market space, identify the right market, or clarify your offer. Because um if you are getting sales right now and you know something's not exactly where it needs to be, there's no question in my mind I can help you supercharge that with my eyes closed because I, I've made every mistake already. Not because of my genius, but because of my, uh, my, my ability to get my ass kicked over 20-something years and keep learning from brighter minds than myself, you know? Oh, Ron, you know who else is a badass that I just have to... Uh, mentioned because he's been a great mentor of mine. I mean, Travis Saga is one of them. Ron Lynch, talk about pitchmen. He has written so many infomercials from behind the scenes. So um, he doesn't really have any training. He's got his marketing mercenary training. He, he releases once a year. But if you if you want to follow somebody, he's an amazing guy. And I just want to say never never do it, never do what I just did, which is yeah, I just did my call to action. <laughs> and then, then change change channels. You're say, too, you're too good of a wingman. You want to be the, the offer wingman. But but let me just say, like, I've been following you for over 15 years and following your cop. You're one of the smartest direct response marketers, business people. Um, and I I've been following your copy. I remember I was at the Brian Kurtz Titans event. And Ed, you won't remember this, but I remember you sat he's, right. He's, you, an, you, he's, an, he's another genius. Brian Kurtz is another genius. I mean, you know, Jerry, I mean, you keep going. I mean, you're bragging about me, but yeah. I, I actually feel, I just feel like I'm, you know, I, 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 I've been lucky enough to be thrown into this environment where this category of like this, this, my parents didn't have this type of business. We weren't able to create podcasts. We weren't able to do all this stuff. I mean, my dad did real hard work, you know? Well, go ahead, man. Just no, I was just going to say, I was at the, it was, you know, the Titans event, amazing speakers, amazing people in attendance. And Ed sits right next to me. We're both from Chicago. I, he didn't know who I was. I had been following his, what he does, his copy and his businesses uh, for years. So I knew exactly who you were. And we we chatted. And, um, you know, I go, to, I've gone to your conferences, uh, your events. Um, I listened to you yesterday for three hours on, on YouTube ah. because you're, you know, like you said, anyone who talks to you, just you are a giver and you just um, learn from you. So I appreciate you sharing with the world your gift and everyone check out um, Ed O'Keefe live. 
www.thecoachmentor.com to learn more. So thanks, everyone. Right. Thanks. You're the best, buddy. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.